Oops. Good morning. Um, looks like Je uh, Jeanette's having a little bit of trouble with her uh, computer, so let's give her a few more minutes. Hopefully she'll figure that out soon. <laughs> I hope everyone's doing well. She comes on anytime soon. I hope it comes through. I'm not seeing anyone on here. Oh, here we go. Okay, good. Hello, my friend. Hey, girl. <laughs> How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Oh, I still got my virtual background on. Okay, cool. Yes, you do. <laughs> I can turn that off. So That's happy fine. Friday. Happy Memorial Weekend. Happy Memorial Weekend, everyone. I hope everybody is doing well and healthy. I'm just wondering where are you? Where are you guys going to go? Hold on one second. I'm going to broadcast this. Okay, now the attendees can see. Great. Okay. <laughs> so happy Memorial Weekend. I hope everybody is happy and healthy and safe. I'm wondering how many people are going to the river this weekend. I mean, it's usually a really big trip to the river or somewhere out of town, right? I wonder what people are doing instead of going out of town. Please share what you're doing this weekend, Memorial Weekend. We'd love to hear it. And also, it'd be kind of cool to find out what other interior design spaces in your, or what other spaces in your home you would like to see interior design ideas on. So please uh, type in the chat anything that you're interested in so that we might be able to cover it on our last bonus Friday on, um, I believe that's June 12th. So please type in any rooms or any areas of your home whether it's inside or outside, let us know what you're interested in. We'd like yeah. to hear it. Please do. We're covering next week bathrooms and then kitchens the following. So the last one is kind of a bonus. So if there's anything, like Jeanette said, in particular you're interested in, give us a heads up and we'll see if we can incorporate that. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to talk today about interior design of course and this is your home redesign series it's our six-week series and monica olson with casa Fina interior designs is here to share her 20 plus years of experience with us in different areas of our home and like i said we're going to be discussing laundry rooms today so i'm excited to see what could we possibly do in that small space in our home right it's probably one of the smallest spaces we have in our home so I'm super yes. excited to see what Monica has to share with us today. And keep in mind, next week we're going to be covering the topic of bathrooms. And then the following week will be kitchens. So please make sure if you have anybody that's looking at doing any remodels, whether it's in the bathroom or a kitchen, that you let them know about our webinar. Anyone can sign up and we would love to see you. So um, can you please let us know also if you can hear us okay? Sometimes we think everyone can hear us and... We're not always 100% sure if that's true. So let us know if you can hear us. And uh, Monica, would you like to get started? Do you have anything to share today? Um, not necessarily, hold on. Um, you need to disable, I can't share screen. <laughs> you can't share, mm -mm. are you a participant? Am I a participant? I thought I- I mean, are you the panelist? I thought it was. Uh oh, did I not do that see. right? I don't know. Let me Let's, just see. Oh, it's participant. Shoot, I did the wrong one. <laughs> um, let me see. Um, Can you allow me in? Let me see if I hit share screen. Let me see if that works. Hold on, let me hit done. How's that? I, let me try. Yes. Yay. Sorry, I thought I grabbed the right one. <laughs> That's okay. We learned. All right, lives. everyone. How's everyone doing today? Let me get this on. Okay. okay, great. All right, I now we're back. Okay, okay great. good. All right, well, welcome everyone. This is our third session. So we're getting through these and I hope you'll join us for the next 
three because the kitchen and bath really are going to be the ones that I think most everyone would be interested in hearing about, but laundry is just as important. Um, not as probably interesting of a topic, but it's, um, it's definitely something you want to you want to consider. So um, basically what I want to cover in this next issue is we'll talk about function, locations, um, style and design, storage, um, that's a big one, appliances. There's so many new um, washer and dryers combos out there. So cover a little bit of that. Although I got to be honest, that's probably a whole topic on its own. Um, wow the budget and uh, other uses of that room. So if you're lucky enough to have a designated laundry room, some are you know, in a hallway closet type of thing, then there's a lot of other possibilities in that space. So right now we'll discuss um, functionality. And sorry, I'm gonna move my screen here. I don't know if you're seeing that or not, but I wanna get it out of the way. Um, so I think the first thing, whenever I go to visit with clients, my first question is, what are your goals for this room? And same applies to the laundry room. You basically want to figure out, all right, um, some of the things that help me design your space is if I know, you know, what size family you have, how much laundry are you doing a week? Um, you know, it depends on kids, kid age groups. So if you have young ones, you know, you're going through that constantly too, because they, when they're little, they get things dirty quicker. Mm -hmm. And then with teens, you know, obviously you've got kids in sports and that's a whole different ball game. Um, so that's another question that I have. Um, organization and storage, you know, you definitely want some organization in there and where you're storing, you know, your detergent, those kind of things. Um, folding clothes, are you the type that likes to, you know, go into the living room or family room and fold there or a bedroom? If you have a designated laundry room, do you have space to do that? So, you know, it's nice to have a countertop, um, a bar for hanging delicate items. A lot of times I like to hang some of my clothing, my um, delicate items, and I just feel that it, they last longer. So I like to either have a drying rack or a bar with, um, you know, somewhere I can hang them. And then ironing and steaming, if you have a um, need for that. A uh, sink is always a great idea if you have the space. Um, I think, you know, those of you that do realize how much you do use it. And then if you're in that room for any length of time, entertainment, music, TV, just something to help you get through those tedious chores. Hmm. I need to go. What's going on here? Sorry. I have a, uh, an ironing board that is installed in the wall. So it's like a cabinet and I just open the cabinet, pull it down. The iron sits up there, has a nice little um, yeah. area for a hot iron to be put back in. And yeah. so that's super cool. Yeah, those are great to have. I, I'll, in, in the next couple of slides, I'll show some ideas on that too, but great. similar to what you're saying. Um, the next topic that I'll go over with the client is, you know, what style do you like? And, Realistically, you want it to blend in with the rest of the home, but if you have a separate space, you can really do whatever you want with it. So the different styles that you'll have, um, typically just in your home, you can have a traditional style, contemporary and modern, or what I call transitional is in between the two. Um, quirky and fun or eclectic, those are always really interesting rooms because it really is reflecting your personality. and. Even in a, a utilitarian room like that, you do want something that really speaks to you because you're going to be spending time in there. Um, the farmhouse, this picture is definitely more of that farmhouse vibe going with it. Um, you have the reclaimed wood up here. Get my little laser pointer. I love this guy. Um, so you have reclaimed shelving. You've got the um, countertop here in, in a butcher. It looks like it's probably a butcher block or could be the same, you know, reclaim wood. You got your farmhouse sink. They tied it in even with this little pail. Um, so there's ways to make that look more, you know, of a, of a it, it has a quality of a, a space that you like. Uh, it can be zen-like. So if you're really into, you know, 
um, relax, the spa feel, those all kind of lend itself to that Zen feel. And then beachy. So you can really make it anything you want. Um, I just, I think it's fun to decorate them a little bit more um, just because you're, it's, you know, it's such a, it can be such a boring space. So um, the other issue that we have is where is it located? So do you have the space for a separate room or is it, you know, part of a, like a hallway closet type of uh, thing or um, like this picture on the right, you have it in a little um, behind uh, folding doors and kitchen. So this is a great space. It's a great idea if you are really short on space and you want something inside the home. Um, that can be placed in any number of locations in a laundry, it, you know, in a hallway closet, in a bathroom. When I first was married, we had a little three bedroom, one bath Spanish style home. We were going to add on and in the interim, we were figuring out, well, I don't want it in the, in the garage because I don't want to walk outside if it's raining or, you know, it's just a pain to carry it further from one area to the next. And being that the bathroom was between bedrooms, it just was an ideal location, especially with young kids. So that's an option. Um, again, here it's in a kitchen. Wouldn't be my first choice, but again, it, it really depends on what your needs are. Um, family room or a basement. So those are some of the areas you can do. Um, you know, you can place it. And this side here, it is just a utilitarian room, but it was decorated cute, the, the flag. So again, you can personalize it, um, have some storage in there. On the other side, you're not seeing it in this picture, but there is a linen space of a utility closet and um, their water closet is in there. So you, um, you can make this uh, as practical or, or not as you want. Um, let's see the next one. This is the fun part. Design and materials. So how do you want to personalize your room and what materials are you going to use um, to make it a, you know, cost effective plus make it functional for you and ease of use. So you're going to consider cabinetry if you have the space or shelving. If you have a smaller closet, obviously shelving will do, or maybe just some cabinets on top of the, uh, you know, above the washer and dryer. Um, if you have space for a sink, you want, you know, you're going to need a backsplash and a countertop. And I always recommend quartz. Um, I would say 99% of what I'm doing is with quartz. Uh, here's another example of a, it's by Cambria. It's a U.S. Uh, manufacturer. They have beautiful quartz. Um, probably a little more expensive than you want to go in a laundry room, but if you have the budget for it, I would say go for it. And different types of materials, so the flooring, you know, you can do the tile that looks like wood, there's luxury vinyl tile or LVT. It's really come, become so popular recently in the last couple of years because it's waterproof, it's kid friendly, dog friendly, it, you, it's almost indestructible, but it's pretty realistic to natural wood. So um, it's, it's a great alternative um, to tile. I would obviously never recommend putting wood in a laundry room, just if in, you know, in case you have a leak or the um, washing machine flows over. Paint color, what are you going to do about lighting? Um, typically, you're going to have a, you know, the recessed cans, but if you have space and you want, you could add some, you know, you could even add some um, pendant lighting here or here on either side or in the corner. Um, here we have a window, which is really nice to have, bringing some lighting to the space. And do you want to put some window treatments on there? Um, adding furniture. And uh, I'll show you the next slide, which is another example. So this one ha covers almost all the elements that I, you know, you're going to need to consider. Um, this one's friend. It's pretty bold. Uh, sorry, fun, not friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, kind of the beachy theme, which I think is fun, especially here in Orange County. And so they have, you know, a bright, a bright color on the walls and they have the window treatment. They have some accessories. Another countertop, you know, to me, this looks like it's a quartz again, the sink, the faucet. Now, uh, one thing I want to bring up, and this can apply to kitchens and um, bathrooms, not as much, but kitchens and, and utility rooms. They have the um, touch mechanism. 
So if your hands are really dirty, say you're, you know, say you're using this also as a room where you like to, you know, it's off of the backyard with an entry and you're doing some gardening, you want to come in and wash up, you don't necessarily have to turn it on and off, you can just touch it if your hands are full of, you know, whatever. So that's a good uh, option for you too. Um, again, accessories, you have a bench, a stool here, it looks like there's a little bench there in the corner. Um, the wood flooring, I'm sorry, uh, it could be tile, I'm not sure this isn't actually one of my photos, but you can use either wood or, I'm sorry, uh, luxury vinyl tile or actual tiles that resemble wood. And they're really doing a great job on that too. So those are some options. Does anyone have any questions so far? I know I'm kind of running through this. Feels a little I, um, I wanted to comment on the blue and white on your last screen. How mm -hmm. I love how like it just it's so appealing to the eye that mm. nice deep blue. And it doesn't really stand out. It's almost like it hides the cabinets down below and you just see the really pretty white um, subway tile in the back and the white yeah. counters that are just beautiful. It just, I think that that combination, it's so classic and just exactly. makes you want to hang out in there. So I love, I love that color combination. Yeah. And actually blues connect as a neutral. So mm. it, it doesn't have to be just, you know, white or a wood tone, a stain. Um, it's considered a neutral tone too, depending on what you do with it. So I know, I think this is my favorite. I'm partial to blue. So. And, <laughs> and the blues, yeah, yeah. And, and the blues are more of like a calming color. So maybe yeah. in your laundry room when you, you've got this havoc -y pile of laundry to do, maybe it's great to put blues in the laundry room to help soothe and calm mm -hmm. those nerves of that huge pile of laundry of, for three kids in a home. So <laughs> maybe yeah, blue's a good idea. <laughs> not a bad idea. <laughs> so then the next slide is going to cover budgets. Um, I know everyone that I, when I initially meet with clients and we are discussing budget, it's always a touchy subject and I totally understand that. But as a designer, for us to give you what you want, we need to know really what your, your budget is, if it's realistic for your expectations of what that room's gonna look like. And we work to give you the most that we can for that budget. So, you know, the biggest bang for your buck. Um, but ultimately you drive that budget you tell us what you are comfortable with and we work within that so that we can give you you know hopefully as much as of what you would like in that space uh, and the pricing really depends on a number of factors when you're discussing any room but in the laundry room you know it's again how much laundry are you doing what um, what items do you want in there do you do you have space for a sink and some cabinetry um, you know, it, it could be a basic room size. And the averages, and again, this is a median if you're talking about a laundry room that has some cabinetry, like the sink, you're gonna deal with some lighting, you're gonna paint, you have flooring, um, cabinet and countertop materials, and then your appliances. We're seeing the averages about six to 7,000. And that also depends on um, the location where you live. So obviously Southern California, California in general is going to be way more expensive than Midwest. So you have to consider too that, you know, a lot of people, me included, watch the uh, home design shows. I, I enjoy them. I like watching them more for what, you know, what that designer did in the space. Um, the budgets are not totally realistic in terms of, first of all, a lot of them are done outside of California. So you can't pay attention really to what they're saying the budget is because a lot of other times um, vendors are donating material so the cost is less so keep that in mind when you're looking at something you think oh i can do that for that you know price and it doesn't it's not realistic um but that's it's fun great. to watch that's great insight because uh people you know they believe and they trust what's being told on television and they probably assume everything's being accounted for and maybe that budget was even higher than it could have been exactly. had, you know, had it been done um, yeah, with different I used, materials. I, I worked for a design build construction company years ago and they did one of the first, um, oh shoot, what's the name of that show? The one where they go in and a week later the house was done. Um, it's not Flip This House, is it? No, it was probably about 10, 15 years ago. Oh. Um, oh. I can't remember the name now, I'm drawing a blank, but 
basically it was done in a week, but it was slapped together. <laughs> and, and it took, you know, they, they had to come back and finish it up. The comp we did one of the first homes. It was here in Costa Mesa, actually. Um, shoot, I'm sorry, I can't think of the name now. I'm drawing a blank. But, you know, the, the, the point of those shows is to get ratings and to draw in viewers. So that's what they're gearing mm -hmm. it towards. It's not always um, realistic in terms of the budget. Uh, so just bear in mind that when you start looking at things and think, oh, I love that, I love that. And, you know, I see it's only costing this amount. And it really is not the same. But um, anyways, yeah. And again, you can do something as low as 500 if you're just painting and maybe changing the countertop or something. But if you're really getting into a room that requires, you know, all of the above, it, it's somewhere in that vicinity. And then if you're changing locations of the laundry room, it could go up 10 grand or more. It just depends on, you know, what, what the needs are and for plumbing. Where is that going to be? Is it, is there plumbing available near the location you're moving it to, or do you have to bring that in? Is it a second story? Is it at one end of the house to the other? So a lot of factors are involved when it comes to pricing out of a laundry room or any space for that matter. And I think the best thing, I always try to just give ranges, but ultimately the scope of work and what you, materials you've selected are going to determine that budget. So a, Covering again, you know, materials obviously are going to affect it. Um, lighting and electrical, plumbing, appliances. Um, you know, if you're going to put in a sink, the fixtures, and painting. So all those come into play when you're looking at changing out the um, changing out a room. Storage. These are kind of interesting. Um, I like this also. This. Um, subject because there's so many things you can use to make your your space more organized. Uh, we talked earlier about the um, ironing board and here's an example. Um, sorry, I guess I lost my little guy here. This um, ironing board, it's a pullout. They're a little bit smaller than a standard, you know, um, mm -hmm. ironing board. But I actually had one of these in, in my previous home. And it was great. I, I had it in, in, not in the laundry room, I had it in my uh, bathroom off of my closet. And it was good for touch up. And the other thing that I like for touch up is um, the uh, steam iron. And you can keep it in a laundry room or in a closet. That's another great thing. I'm stepping away from storage on that. It's just a side note. Um, but in the laundry room, again, if you have a, enough space and you have some cabinets and you have the sink. Um, you can do trash pullouts, obviously laundry hampers. I like this idea where they have two. It could be one for dark, one for cold, or light um, material, light uh, material clothing. Um, roll out shelves. So if you have a cabinet next to the, uh, uh, the machine, your laundry uh, washing machines. Sorry, I don't know why I'm blanking out here. Um, you can have a cabinet that it roll, you know, roll outs and then you can put your detergents and those kind of things in there or deep drawers. I do like having deep drawers, um, even in the kitchen because I just think they're more practical, uh, utility cabinet. So you, you know, you can store your broom, your, your vacuum, those kind of things in the utility cabinet, um, shelving. Again, if you have a, um, smaller laundry area. It's just a washer and dryer. You don't really have room for much more. You can put some shelving above it to store items. And then bins and baskets just for organizing things in there. You just pull them down. And um, drying racks. I do like having those too. Uh, just because there's some things that you, you know, are not supposed to put in the dryer and you want to say a, a sweater and you want somewhere to lay it across, those come, those are really um, handy to have. They have some that are attached to the wall that fold down. There's some drawers that you have, you know, thin drawers, almost this size here with wood racks to dry clothes. So those are some ideas of what you can use to help organize your space. And then appliances, like I said earlier, this is a subject onto itself. There's so many different um, machines and 
you know, the washers, the dryers, you have the side by side, top loading, front loading is what almost everyone's purchasing right now, the stacks unit, uh, all in one units, which this is an example of. Um, those are becoming more popular. They're actually very popular in Europe. And um, LG, I, I put in their link down at the bottom. They, they have a really, they, they do a decent product. So you might want to just, if you're interested, check that out. But you know, there's so many others that are out there. Um, the front loading typically on the low end, 600, on the higher end, can go up to 2,000 or more, depending on what they're offering. Um, I do like the pedestal bases, whether you put it on something that is sold with the actual laundry unit, or you could stick it on top of a, you know, some drawers and with a base, just, a, you know, strong enough, obviously, to support it. Um, those, the ones that come with machines, normally they're around 200 bucks or so. And then um, the washer dryer combos can be two to three on up. So just again, depends on what your budget is. But um, I, I like to go to some of those sites that just give comparisons so that you can see, you know, what um, components you like and what those are going to cost. I usually deal with a couple of different plumbing companies. I really like Ferguson's. They're the experts. So, you know, I rely on that information more and because that's all, you know, it's all they do. So if you're interested in any of those, um, you know, just reach out and I can give you um, Ferguson's. There's a couple others that I use, but um, I think that's the way to go. But obviously there's, you know, other stores, even I think Costco sells them. So there's a lot of different locations that you can purchase them from. Any questions on that? No questions from the peanut gallery. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I guess I'm you're, covering you're, enough. <laughs> you're very thorough and the ideas are really helpful. I love the little gadgets that you wouldn't see in a home. So when you walk in and the drawers close, you'd have no idea that you could pull yeah. it out and have a drying rack or that um, ironing board. Ironing Those board. are really neat. Yeah. yeah. I loved, actually, I really loved having that ironing board in, um, it was a linen closet in our bathroom. And so if I had something that, you know, just needed a touch up, I would use that. Also the hand mm -hmm. steamers. Um, you just have to wait a few minutes for those to warm up too. But uh, either one is a great idea. Yeah. And then the final topics we're going to just, I want to cover some other uses that we have. Oh. If you're, um, you know, if you have the space, it's nice to be able to do, make that a multifunction room. So it doesn't have to be only about, you know, doing laundry, which is so boring. One of my things, mm -hmm. unloading the dishwasher and laundry. <laughs> if I could pay someone to do it, I would. Um, I like the idea if you have pets, if you have dogs, especially large dogs that, you know, they like labs and golden retrievers are running out around and getting dirty. If you want to just give them a quick rinse, this is a great idea um, to have a indoor laundry, you know, area for them. And I think this is cute. She, he has his own little bed there. I don't know, he, she. <laughs> that um, is so cute. Isn't it cute? It and the is. other thing I've done for clients, actually this was done in a kitchen, but just as easily in a laundry room. Oh. If, um, if it's off the kitchen, it makes more sense to do something like this, uh, a pet station for their food. So another cabinet, we had um, an opening at the bottom, similar to this, and then a, a tray where they can put their food, you know, you can feed them in there and pull it out. So it's, you know, not a necessity, but it's kind of a fun idea. I never thought to put a shower for the dog yeah. in either the laundry room or the kitchen. What a great idea. We love to go yeah. get our dog washed. Well, we go wash him at, you know, we do the same kind of wash like that at the pet store. Uh -huh. And it's great. I mean, shoot, to have that in our house is a great right. idea. I never even thought of that. Yeah, no, it's, it's a great Aww. idea. Definitely in a laundry room or even in a garage, you know, but again, mm -hmm. you have to consider the plumbing. You, you right. definitely have to have plumbing brought in if there is none accessible. Um, the other thing I think is great is a gift wrap station. So on this one, oh, yeah. it's a cabinet, um, like a utility cabinet, and this is a pull-out bin that 
you know, houses um, wrapping paper. And then obviously they're very organized with their bags and the ribbons and, you know, whatever else they use to decorate uh, presents. You know, I need one of those. I know. <laughs> I had a, a friend that lives in, uh, I, have, I have a friend that lives in, um, in South Santa Fe. Um, and she had a whole room <laughs> that was dedicated to gift wow. wrapping. It was insane. But this mm -hmm. is a good alternative. And I like the fact that you have kind of a little workstation here. So again, this can be an area that you're even just paying bills or something like that. If you don't want to have it, in, you know, you don't have room in another part of the house, you could do something like that here too. So it's, yeah, I think if you have the space, it's a great way to add other, um, you know, things that you can use that are, you know, make it more efficient for you. And then, um, so again, gift wrap station or a craft room, if you're into crafts. Um, I have a client, she, I love her, she's so cute, she's so sweet. She does a lot of quilting, so she has a little oh, yeah. room that she does that, and we've organized the closet in there to, to make that um, work for her. So quilting, there's a lot of uh, space that's needed for quilting. I've had yeah. a few clients with quilting, and they do have a whole room dedicated. It, Exactly. And there is so many things that they have to make a quilt. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. So that is probably a project. I mean, that could be a class in itself, probably. Yeah, that's true. If you have yeah. a room that maybe, a, you know, a guest room or something that's not being used, that's a great place for something like that. Because they do take I, up space. I could share a couple comments with you. Okay. Um, we have a comment that they like the deep drawers idea so mm -hmm. probably a couple slides back right and then the room that you just left with the wrapping paper and such um, uh -huh. it was shared that that's a really unique use of space if i had an animal i would love to have a room like that at this time the creative space is more us which is the family of four <laughs> mm, yes <laughs> and again it's what you need that space to to you know work how you need that space to work for you so there's so many in a multi, you know, multi-function space, there's so many things you can do with it. It just depends on your family and the, and the needs, you know, of, of the, everyone in there. Um, the other thing, not that we have mud rooms here, but you know, a, a room that you can use off of the, say the backyard, um, you know, with access to the yard. So that's another, example like here you have the um, laundry room you have the door that goes outside um, actually on the other side there's some storage also in a sink so that's another idea of how you can use that space and um, on the right I have the I would say it's you know it's like a potting station and um, I love gardening I think I've said this before if I wasn't doing interior design I would be a landscape Mm -hmm. um, I would be a landscaper, whatever that term is, um, because I loved working in the yard. And so having, you know, a potting station somewhere that you can clean up and the sink, you know, you have that there to, to wash up to. Um, you can even have bins that store some, you know, some of your different um, soil. So planting soil, um, there, there's just so many uses in that space. You can store in cabinetry above, um, vases and, you know, different pots and type of things. So again, these are for larger spaces, obviously, but if you're like, you know, if you do have that option, it's a great idea. And a, a pantry off the kitchen. This is also something that I find um, a lot of my clients, they have a little bit of extra storage space um, off off the kitchen, whether it's a pantry or a laundry room. And so that's a great area to put some of those uh, extra things that you want to store that you don't have room for in the kitchen or, you know, in your dining room. So um, those are other uses. I'm sure there's others I'm not thinking of, but those are most typically what I've seen. Um, so we're doing this one real quick. <laughs> Let's see. What, um, what I'm finding is a lot of homes have laundry in the garage. So mm -hmm. you probably could make the wall look like this in that garage, right? Exactly. So maybe you're putting this on one wall and then behind you is your garage. 
I've also seen some people actually create a laundry space where they'll have the wall mm -hmm. where the laundry is, and then behind them, they'll, they'll build like cabinets out. So it kind of blocks in the laundry, makes it feel like a room. Yeah. And they have their baskets for family. Each family member's laundry will have its own basket and it's very organized right. and it looks really neat. And then yeah. they still have the rest of their garage space. That's good for like a wide garage. Yeah, um, a larger garage. And it's almost like a locker room type of thing where you have this, you know, you could have a bench below and um, hooks or oh, yeah. cubbies above. There's a lot of ways to, to do that too. So yeah, that's another option, which is, it's a great idea. There's a lot and, of fun things you can find even on Pinterest if you're looking to um, you know do some something new in your laundry room Pinterest has a ton of ideas so what is your opinion of the front loading washer machines versus the top loading I've had some people share with me mm -hmm. they don't like the front loading because the uh, the um, the water or the moisture yeah. the water doesn't yeah um, they initially, when they came out, there were issues of the water, um, you know, being totally, um, there wasn't water left retained in the, the laundry unit. And they're doing better with it now. Um, I, I like the front loading. Um, I'm not crazy about the top because you have that, you know, you, well, the older ones have the little uh, spin thing in the middle. The front loading give you more um, room, so there you can put a larger load in there. Um, but like I said, they're doing better with that issue about it, um, you know, spinning enough to release all the water and that it's not sitting there at the bottom. Um, but yeah, there there have been issues with that. So I don't know if that answers your question, but I still would prefer the front loading. Really? And yeah. 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 And because of space too. Right. More for, for me, for space, you know, there's so many different options now on these things too. There's some steam cleaning in there. There's, um, you know, the different cycles, there's gentle, there's more than just, you know, the three or four cycles that we used to always have. Um, so I, I'm not opposed to them. Um, you want to really read up and just see which brands, you know, are the best. And like I said, I rely on my reps, say at Ferguson's or um, um, there's a couple others that I use and drunk with right now, but uh, I, they're really on, they keep on top of these um, things that come up. So it's, it's always a good idea to, to talk to them. It's a, that's all they do for plumbing and bath fixtures. I, I definitely rely on them. That's cool. That's good to know. Where are they located near Huntington Beach? Ferguson's. There's one. Um, the one I go to is in Irvine. I think, okay. I think there's one in, in Huntington Beach. I'm, I forget, to be honest, but I, I deal with one in Ferguson. I'm sorry, okay. in Irvine. Okay. And then um, there is fixtures and faucets in Orange. And then I think there's one also at the Laguna Design Center, which I don't know if I'd go there, but in, the, in Orange, it's not, it's not very far. Um, and what do you do for, you know, so a lot of people have a laundry room that just houses the laundry side by side. Right. Mm -hmm. Some cases it's stackable, but um, the, there's a lot of homes that I sell that have a side by side laundry right. and maybe just room for a cabinet above yeah. How how could they incorporate like a drying rack in that small space or it, yeah, I mean, it's hard I mean, to do that. What I would do is on I've done before is on one side of the, you know, say above the washing machine, okay. I put a, a shallow or, you know, a shorter um, cabinet, say like uh -huh. this. And then underneath I put a, a rack, I, okay. a drying rack or you know, there you don't have as much space, so you could put um, a rod and just hang clothes, or on the back, you can put a, a rack that folds down. And then the other side can still be either open shelving or a cabinet. So I would do something like that. Okay. No, Any other not. ideas for a small space? Um, Most people have cabinets or shelving yeah, above to store exactly. their goods, yeah. yeah. That would be one. And again, the other thing is stackable units. Those are mm. space saving. Uh, you know, they're not ideal, 
but I think with tight spaces, it's not a bad way to go. And that gives you a little more storage. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So uh, those would be the, you know, it, it's with space so limited, there's not a lot of options, unfortunately. <clears throat> Do you have a recommendation on where to buy appliances or like washer and dryer? Well, like I said, I, I usually refer my clients and I purchase from say Ferguson's or okay. um, I bought at Sears, I bought at, um, I'm not a huge fan to be honest of, um, I guess there's Best to. Buy. People buy from Best them. Buy, from Best they can buy. do that too. I, I oh, don't typically go there. Mm -hmm. um, what's the big one everyone's Pacific Sales. Oh, okay. um, that's another one. I think they're doing better. I was not very fond of using them because their service, if there was an issue, was not great, but I hear it's improved. So that's another option. And they usually and that's have pretty why, good deals. Okay. And that's why you um, like Ferguson's because they, yeah. they offer great support. Yeah, they're great. The support and the service is, is excellent. Yes. Um, sorry, I was just thinking something and it escaped. Um, something about Pacific sales or service or. Oh, no, I know what it was. Some of the higher end product. So if you're talking about like um, uh, Bosch or any of those those really you there's pretty similar price all the way across different you know different stores and because the the margins are, are not so great so most of the higher end product even aside from just laundry machines um anything cook uh you know refrigerators um cooktops <laughs> ovens they when you start talking bosch and um, the other higher end items there, you're not going to really be able to shop as much in terms of finding a better price. Sometimes they offer like, okay, we'll throw in a dishwasher, but other than that, you're not going to get a lot of, um, you know, savings from one place to the next on other, you know, say like Kenmore, um, L and I think LG, you're, you're probably going to get some, you, you can price shop. But um, some of those higher ends, they're, you're, you're not going to get much of the savings from one area, you know, from one store to another. That's good to know. Yeah. Great. So we were at a house yesterday um, offering yeah. the, the free one hour consultation. And one of the things that was brought up that's good for people to realize now, if you're going to be starting a home remodel, and you're planning for it to be done, let's say in a month from now or two months from now, you may be surprised by the timelines that the manufacturers have now. They may say they have something in stock or it'll take two weeks. It's actually taking double, if not triple the amount of time to get things just because yes. everybody is working on a, um, they have less capacity, they right. have fewer employees, they have less shipping, they maybe can't work. So yeah. there's a lot of issues that we're dealing with right now. So you'll find that your project time will probably be more like um, double or triple the time that you plan. So planning in advance right now for anything. I mean, gosh, even Amazon shipping, it's no longer two days. Their prime shipping is, you know, sometimes a week or even three weeks. So yeah. everything is that way. They spoiled us, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's, the, that's the problem we've been facing is um, purchasing because like Jeanette just said, a lot of companies have had to cut back, you know, their hours, um, the employees. So they're really just struggling to keep up. It seems like things are starting to pick up again. Um, I just ordered some cabinets from a company and normally it's four to six weeks and now it's six to eight. Um, and she said, we're hoping it's six to eight. And so that's something you have to bear in mind. You may not be able to get in things in as quickly as possible. Um, I always warn my clients and just say, look, it may take this long. So, you know, if we're trying to, I, I'm actually starting a, a bathroom remodel with a client and um, she has a deadline of July because she has family coming. So we're actually ordering everything now and then um, waiting until, you know, she gets the com company leaves to start the actual work. 
just because I, I don't want to chance the fact that it could come in, you know, the six weeks and then she's stuck. I mean, we're almost at the end of the month now anyways. So those are things you have to keep in mind when you're um, ordering. It does fabric. I mean, I just, <laughs> I ordered a table for a client and it was in stock. And then when I ordered it, they said four to six weeks. And I go, wait, that's not in stock. You told me it was in stock. She goes, that's their version of in stock. So wow. even I'm learning as I'm, you know, placing these orders and, you know, doing things that it doesn't mean that it's available that quickly. Luckily, she wasn't in a rush, so it's fine. But, you know, those are things that we have to keep in mind as we're, you know, trying to get some projects up and running again. Because, yeah, a lot of people kind of held off and everyone's starting to ramp up again. Yep, that is the reality. So yeah. good and bad all with? in our quarantine. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so please keep sharing the rooms or spaces in your home that you would like us to cover on our sixth week. We're open to suggestions. We have some things in mind, but we're looking to see if there's anything that you might want so we can appeal to what you need. So yeah. um, this will conclude our Your Home Redesigned. I hope that looking at the different ideas for laundry rooms have given you some inspiration to maybe bring some more joy into your home and more efficiency. And feel free to reach out to Monica or myself. We're happy to give you insights on what's a good investment in your home, what might bring you more joy, how to add more light, things like that. We can um, help you depending on your budget and what you might be looking to do. So we're so thankful you joined us today. We will be here again next Friday at 11 a.m. Yep. And everybody give Monica a hand. Thank you, Monica, Thanks, for all your hard work and all your no insights. Worries. I, I enjoy we'll doing this. <laughs> I know it's fun. It's fun. And you, you know, if it helps, <laughs> if it helps you out there, you know, just, I know you're stuck in your homes a lot right now and yeah. I know it gets a little frustrating. So even just something to brighten up your space will make a difference. So okay, stay yeah. tuned. Next week's going to be good. Yeah. Stay and tuned. Everybody... We're going to be covering bathrooms. One of yeah, specialties. Bathrooms. So yes, my, my niche is kitchen and bathrooms. So um, so register now. Yeah, and everyone have a great um, Memorial Weekend. Yeah, stay safe, stay healthy. Oh, wait, 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 before we go. Oh, you got some hands. Oh, thanks, Fred. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We'll All see right, you soon. Everyone. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.